All right, welcome to this intermediate Python course, data analysis and representation in Python. This is a small re-recording of the first part of the course because we had a mess up when uh, we actually did that the first time. So to access the course material, you can go to our GitHub repository, whose URL you see here, okay, and whose page you see there. And the first step that you have to do is to get all of the content, uh, which contains both the notebooks, but also solutions to the exercises and everything associated. So it's important that you get that. For that, either clone this repository, if you know who, or just click on this green button there and download the zip file. Once this is done and you have all of the content unzipped, of course, in your computer, load up a Jupyter notebook instance or Jupyter lab if you prefer, navigate to where you have put the material and at some point you should end up with something like this. Then if you go there and start up the first notebook here, we are going to be able to start up with the content of the course, which is to learn how to load up tabular data and, and start analyzing it, looking at it with Python. So this is a menu for this very first lesson. First off, we are mostly going to talk about Pandas library, yeah. And so Pandas is a library that is based off of NumPy arrays and implements the idea of a data frame, which is heavily inspired from the R data frame, where it's basically tabular data, okay, organized according to rows and columns. Okay, the columns have column names, of course, and the rows may have names. Often by default, it will be a numbered uh, in a bunch of numbers. And sometimes it's names that have more sense to that, actual labels, which we refer to as index, all right? And so a data frame is composed of several columns. And if we delve a little bit into the structure, of a data frame. Each column is actually what a, its own little custom tag, which is what pandas call a series, all right? Which also have index and a given type. We'll go back to that uh, in more detail later on during the course. But first off, the first thing that we need to do is to um, be able to load our modules there to make sure that we have all of the required libraries. Okay, right, so this worked. And then we need to be able to read tabular data inside Python, okay, from a file, typically a CSV file or a TSV file as a pandas data frame. So let's look at it together. Our base function is called read underscore table. And to that, you basically give the file path of the file that you want to read and a bunch of parameters, typically the SEP parameter, which determines which is the separator between field. So in the TSV, it's tabs. In the CSV, it's comma or semicolons. It might be something. Else. Whether or not there is a header, okay, and when it can be found, by default, it will expect a header. And you can also ask it to skip some rows. And there are, as we will see, also many, many, many other options that one can use, okay? So let's try and load some data there. All right, so import pandas as PD. That's PD is a very classical shortcut uh, alias for pandas. So DF is, will be the name of the variable that we want to create from this file. There's a CSV file that contains uh, data about the Titanic passengers. So we look at it and DF.head shows us the first few rows. So very useful to check that it really went okay. Now there is something there. You see, it doesn't look super nice. It looks like it has read everything in a single big column containing all of this data. So there follows our first micro exercise where you can try and fix the cell above so that the, um, the reading there goes more smoothly and gives us a better result. All right, and if you have the time, you can try and look up for the help to see if that there is a function that maybe helps you to have different default values for read table and makes you like makes your life a bit easier. Right. 
So in the actual course, we wait, we give people more time to solve these, but then in the video version, of course, we will cut directly to the solution. So just put on pause if you want to work, but otherwise I'll correct right now. So to try and solve that one, of course, you can gather that here, the problem is that the separator in a CSV file is a comma, whereas the default here is tab uh, for uh, for pd.readtable. Of course, if you are unsure, you always want to check this with the help function. Okay, so the help. And if you kind of look at what's in there, set by default, it's a tab, all right? So if you then just go back there, okay, and uh, get this, right? And then you just set the separator as commas, and you read that one, then you get something much, much nicer, much, much closer to what you would actually want to have. All right. Now there is an alternative is that Pandas also has implemented some read underscore and then a format name alternative function. And because CSV is such an ubiquitous format, there is already a read CSV with the default separator as a comma that exists there. And so you can get the same sort of result through, uh, using directly pd.read underscore csv. All right, it's always useful to know both functions and both possibilities when it comes to usage. Okay, so that's for the correction of this little micro exercise. And the next part is just a little commentary on that and also a reloading. If you've not doing, done it, be sure to run that cell to reload the rest of our data set uh, because we will use that for the rest of the notebook going more and more detail in the different part of this little data set. All right, so that's it for my little part. And then I'll give the floor back to Robin with the original video from the original course for part one. Okay, so now another uh, aspect that we might have to deal with when loading data from disk is whether we have uh, a header or not in our uh, data set. So in the example we had so far, uh, you if we look at the actual uh, file on disk, so if I go to uh, data uh, titanic.csv. So here I just have a look at the, at the actual file on disk and we see that the, the first line of the file uh, actually contains a column names okay so what happened is that uh, pandas actually automatically detected that there were column names and so it uses these values the first line of the file as automatically as uh, a column name but now let's uh, see what happens if i try to load a file that has no no header so this titanic, titanic no header file uh, it actually doesn't contain this first line with uh, column names. Okay, so you see that what happens here is that um, Pandas has taken used the first line uh, of the of the file as uh, column names, which here is actually not appropriate because this is is not supposed to be the names of the columns. It's uh, simply uh, the first row of the table. Okay, so if this is a, the case uh, and I want to avoid it, I need to explicitly indicate that header equals none. All right, so if I add this header equals none argument, now uh, pandas will be aware that there are no uh, header uh, values in uh, our file and, and so there should not be any column names. All right, so now the import is done uh, properly. And of course, since I didn't give any uh, column names, so uh, what Panda does is that it simply uses uh, numeric uh, values by uh, default. So the columns are simply uh, named after their uh, position. And as we will see, and as you should be used to with uh, Python, the 
indexing or numbering always starts with uh, zero. So the first row has position zero and the first column has position zero. So for people who come from R, this can be a bit uh, unexpected because in, in R, the numbering actually starts with, with one. Now, uh, let's assume that our data does not contain any header, but that we actually want to give you know, uh, uh, column names to our file, uh, to our data frame, sorry. Uh, there, what we can do is that we can add the uh, pass the optional names argument to the read table function, and we can specify the names of the columns, right? So you see that I simply pass uh, a sequence of strings, here I give a list, but I could also give a, a tuple, for instance. And <clears throat> now I have imported my data and the values I have passed here in my list uh, have been used as column names. Uh, right, so only requirement is obviously that the number of names uh, of strings that you pass uh, to the names argument matches the number of uh, columns. So this is how I can set uh, column names. Now it's also possible to, to set uh, row names and this is what we will see uh, right now. We see that by by default, uh, the row names have, I mean, the, if there are no row names in our file, then the rows uh, are simply get the, the label or the name uh, that corresponds to their position. So starting with uh, zero. So just a, a vocabulary point in pandas, so, Row names are called the index of the data frame. Okay, so whenever we refer to the index of the data frame, it means uh, row names. And we can access these, uh, uh, so access or set these row names using the uh, dot index uh, attribute. Right. So let's let's see uh, what happens if I load uh, files that contains uh, row names. So here. I just want to um, show you the, we just print the start of the file as it is in the, you know, in the original uh, text file. So we see that we have uh, column names and then we have um, the different rows of uh, data. Now, what is, uh, what is uh, different with before is that you see that I don't have a, a name a column anymore. So if you actually count the number of elements you have in the first line, you will see that you have one less element than in all the other lines. All right. So let's see what happens now when I load this file. And you see that uh, what pandas automatically did here is that it used the first value of each uh, each line uh, that is not the header, it used it as uh, name of the column. Okay, so as index value. So now the index values are no longer, uh, you know, the default numeric values zero, one, two, three, and so on. Uh, now uh, the first values of each line in our file has been used as uh, row names, so as index value. And uh, the reason, I mean, the reason why Python uh, uh, pandas sorry did this is because it detect detected that the first row of the file has one less value than all other um, rows in the in the file. So when this is the case, pandas will automatically assume that the first uh, element of each line cross uh, contains the index value, so the name of the of the row. As I mentioned, with uh, uh, dot index, uh, at, uh, if you, the dot index attribute of the data frame contains the index value. So then, uh, anytime, for instance, if you want to access uh, row names, you can uh, query this dot index uh, attribute of the of the data frame. For instance, here I display the five uh, first um, items. Maybe here just a note that to say that you can see that the, the type of the object uh, returned by dot index is is not directly a, a list or a tuple. It's actually an, an index uh, object. So most of the time you can use this 
uh, directly as a, I mean, it's an iterable object, so you can use it in a loop or so on, uh, just as, it, as if it was a list. But uh, there are times if you really need to, to pass, uh, uh, to have the content of the index as a list, then you have to explicitly uh, convert it. So for instance, here, but you can do this simply with, uh, uh, by using the list uh, constructor like like that. So here you see I have the five first element of the index now as a as a list. Um, so there are, there are times if, uh, for instance, uh, your um, the file that you're loading has not as an exact structure where the first row has one less value than the other rows. For instance, uh, our data file, file uh, is uh, the same as we had in the beginning. So with the same number of uh, column names as uh, elements in the subsequent uh, rows. Uh, but for some reason, I want to use the name column as um, uh, as index values, then I can always, you know, man manually, manually sorry, indicate that the index column should be the first uh, column, corresponds to the first column of the data I'm loading. I do this with the index underscore call mm -hmm. argument. So I can either pass a position or I can say, this gives the same result. I can say my index uh, corresponds to the uh, column name of the uh, data frame. So if I do this now, the instead of being a regular column, uh, the name uh, column here is actually the index of the uh, of the data frame. So it's it's not uh, an actual column anymore. It's uh, the index. If I want to check to make sure, I can print the list of columns. So you see, it starts with sex, age, and so on, and name is no longer uh, an actual column. And you can actually see here in the display that. Uh, you know, the name uh, label is a bit lower than the other ones to really show that this is an index. Okay, so these are the basics for, of uh, loading uh, a data frame with, uh, with Pandas. Uh, of course, there are a lot of other uh, options for um, read tables that we will not look at all of, of them, but we just listed a, a couple of here that can be useful. Uh, for instance, you can pass the NA underscore values argument uh, to indicate to Python which uh, uh, values in your data set should be considered as uh, you know NA uh, values, so sort of empty uh, values of your table. Um, if you want to automatically convert certain values to true or false, or so the Boolean true or false, you can do this with a true false, uh, uh, true values, false values, sorry, argument. Uh, if your data is compressed, you can also use also an argument to, uh, that you can pass to Pandas so that it automatically decompress your data before uh, loading it and uh, so on. So just a quick example here. Uh, I have this uh, very small data frame that I call ugly data frame because it's uh, contained, the data is, is, is quite uh, messy in it. You see it has, Two columns, and then I have, uh, for instance, for NA values, I used the data frame used the strings missing and not available, and also an NAN. Uh, so, but actually, all this should be uh, NA values, and also I would like that uh, uh, the values. Um, I mean, it should contain only true and false uh, values. And so the numeric values zero should be converted to false and any other, so one and two should be converted to true. So I can fix this by passing the following argument. So NA values, I will give a list of all the, the strings that should be converted to NA. So for instance, missing and not available should become NA. Uh, so true one and two should be true and false and zero should be false. And you see that when I pass these arguments now, my data set is, my data frame is much cleaner. Uh, I have 
uh, only true and false values and all the missing uh, values are proper uh, NA values in the in the table. As I quickly mentioned uh, at the start, there are many other uh, you know functions to read specific uh, tabulated file formats. Uh, we just listed a couple here. You can directly read Excel files, uh, uh, JSON, which is actually not a, a tabulated format, but it's still a, a structure uh, type of data. So you can uh, directly read uh, JSON files, SQL files, and uh, so on. So we didn't you can click here to see the exhaustive list. There are quite many specialized functions to, to load um, all sort of different uh, types of files. Okay, so if you're using a fairly common type of file, it's it's quite likely that Pandas already has a function to read it. So please check the documentation. All right. Uh, here we have another a small uh, micro exercise. So uh, when you are asked to read um, this uh, file here, and you have to uh, check if you know uh, in uh, make sure that the data frame is uh, nicely uh, imported so uh, have the right uh, type of separator and also uh, make sure that the uh, test if there is a header or, or not so i give you again a few minutes to to try to load this uh, data set but uh, obviously i gave the wrong um, it's it's not a tab delimited uh, and you see that I only have a single column with all the values. So here, the separator actually seems to be simply a white space. So I can now add a white space as a separator. And now you see it looks a lot uh, better. So I have my uh, different columns and rows loaded uh, properly. Now, maybe one more thing I could do, but you know this depends again on the type of analysis I want to do with the data. But maybe in this case, so you see that I have the, the first column contains, contains uh, gene names. And then each column is actually the, the count of uh, how many times I see a, a given a sequence in the, in the gene. So maybe for this particular analysis, I would like that uh, to have the index of my data frame equal the, the gene names. And so I could do this. Uh, if I want to do this, I need to manually specify it. And I use the uh, index call argument. And here I have two options. Either I can say it's the first uh, column, so zero. Or I could also uh, pass uh, the name of the, of the column, which is uh, gene. So this uh, both give me the same result. And now you see that the actual index of the data frame corresponds to the gene names. Uh, maybe one more thing, maybe some people might have tried to uh, load it without the uh, uh, compression. And you see that if I do this, it actually also uh, works. So in this case, uh, compression argument is uh, appears to be sort of optional. So what happens here is that because zip is such a, ubiquitous um, uh, compression format, a pandas actually is able to auto-detect what if uh, files are compressed with zip. So for zip file, it's not uh, absolutely necessary to specify the compression it's auto-detected. All right, uh, are there any questions? Let me just check the Google Doc, no. All right, so hopefully by now, uh, how we can uh, load the uh, files uh, is clear for everyone.